As you all know, I made a request today for what we were calling a gag order, and I'm I'm not going to walk out of court and do anything other than live up to that. Federal sex trafficking and other charges, to all of which he's pleaded not guilty. There's no VIP section, there is no concierge, only con men, killers, and kingpins. MDC is so bad, federal judges have questioned the harsh conditions for those here awaiting trial. Diddy's current experience at the Metropolitan Detention Center. Mech, in Brooklyn, has been described as grim and challenging. He is reportedly being held in a special housing unit, often called the Hole, which is a small, windowless cell with very limited amenities. The facility itself has a reputation for poor conditions, with detainees often facing overcrowding, violence, and severe staffing shortages. Diddy is said to be sleeping on a concrete floor with only a thin mattress, avoiding food due to concerns about contamination and possible threats to his safety. Substantial amount of money. Imagine if someone paid someone off on the inside to actually poison his food, give him a heart attack, and he dies. And no one would really think anything of it. So that may be one of the reasons he's not eating. He's really, really paranoid. He's really, really... Donald Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen has spoken about the harsh realities of prison life, which can be an especially jarring experience for someone accustomed to luxury like Diddy. According to Cohen, prison is a severe shock, and for some, it feels worse than a death sentence. Inmates are confined to a small 3x5 space with minimal comfort. The setup includes a desk, a plastic chair, a bed with a thin 1-1-2 inch mattress, no pillow and a small locker. The overall conditions are stark, and the lack of basic comfort makes it a horrible, horrible place. Donald Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, spent a harrowing year in federal custody. He says for someone used to a life of luxury like Diddy, prison life is a severe shock. You have a desk, you have a plastic chair, you have your bed with a one and a half inch mattress, no pillow, and you also have a locker. So you basically have three feet by five feet to move around. No, he won't. What will happen is that he's there for, his trial hasn't even started. They, the lawyers are talking about possibly having a trial with him later on, and that won't be until next year. Um, MDC, I've heard, the conditions are very difficult and deplorable. As you said, the maggots, the mice. I had some friends that worked there, so they tell me that the conditions are kind of horrible. MCC closed, so all the prisoners now are going into MDC, the federal prisoners. But what happens is that after a while, when they get sentenced, they get moved. They get moved to prisons around the country. Now, from what I'm hearing today, it could be true or not true, I heard that he might have been moved to Newark. No. And taken really? out of MTC because they may have had that application go in and it might have been granted to Former MEC warden Cameron Lindsay has noted that Diddy's current situation could potentially worsen due to his high profile status and the serious charges against him. Lindsay explained that famous individuals are often targeted in prison, with some inmates seeing attacks on celebrities as a badge of honor, which increases the risk of trouble for Diddy. Additionally, the overall conditions at Mengs are described as horrific and very challenging especially for someone awaiting trial. The facility offers limited access to outdoor recreation and basic amenities, contributing to an already stressful and difficult environment. Makes him a target. Yes, in my humble estimation, his life, his safety is in jeopardy in any correctional lockup right now. Um, he, if it is true, as reported, that he is housed in the special housing unit, it's important to note that the special housing unit is a, is a lockdown, 24-hour lockdown unit. Um, the MDC Brooklyn is a high-rise. The vast majority of the floors are general population floors. But the special housing unit is a 24-hour lockdown facility. So this is for Mr. Combs' protection. Um, his incredible worldwide celebrity combined with the allegations, the charges now, yeah. and indictment, of course, of acts of violence against women make him a very attractive target. All so, right. obviously, they need to... Jean Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, has voiced serious concerns about Diddy's mental health and safety in light of his current legal situation and confinement. Deal hinted that the intense stress of the situation, combined with the harsh conditions of prison life, could push Diddy toward contemplating self-destruction. Because... Puff always had a problem of listening to people that he thought that was less than him. And now he got to listen to people that got power over him 
but never had as much as he had, he's gonna have a big problem in the prison system. He's gonna have a real big problem in the prison system, bro. And having to listen to those COs and having to listen to everybody that got more power than him now, from a person that had all the power in the world that we thought, now, seem like the tables is turning. If these people have it this day way, he's gonna be spending the rest of his life in the prison system. He better hope that they want to make a deal, but I don't think so, or they want somebody else. He better hope, and he got something to offer them. Even if he got something to offer him, you gotta- Former mobster Ori Spado has also highlighted the challenging conditions at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center, where Diddy is being held. Spado's description reveals a harsh environment filled with psychological stress and a lack of basic comforts. It is worse than it was then, all right? But let me tell you, let me tell you about Essex County. Essex County. He, my friend says it's the worst in Newark, Jersey, in Jer New Jersey. It's a very serious jail. People get beat up left and right. The bloods and mother Muslims control everything there. He will be in PC or he's going to have to pay. Now, let me tell you, a guy like Diddy with money, they put him in general population, he's going to be paying a lot of people. A lot of families are going to be very happy because they're going to be getting monthly money from Diddy. Trust me on that there. All right? My friend said it was the worst spot, constant lockdowns, and the food was beyond disgusting. Now, he said it was beyond disgusting there. He's saying that it was great in MDC when we were first there, and it was disgusting. All right. But he said it might be better for him because MDC is really fucking up now. And the MS-13 are controlling. From what I hear, MSN-13 is now controlling MDC. These are folks, this is information that came uh, from somebody who just got released and knows these prisons. So I don't know why this attorney wants to get him transferred from MDC to Essex. It's like from worse to worse. But anyways, that's their choice. The, Me the Metropolitan Detention Center, MEC, provides minimal privileges to its inmates and subjects them to constant threats and violence, creating a stark contrast to the luxurious lifestyle Diddy once led. New accuser went public with more accusations against the music mogul. Talia Graves claims in a civil lawsuit that Combs and a bodyguard drugged, bound, and raped her in 2001 and filmed the incident. Graves is represented by famed litigator Gloria Allred, who is no stranger to representing women in high profile cases, okay? Here's a list, speaking of Gloria Allred here, okay? Here's a list of just some of the women she's represented in the past. Look at this list right here. O.J. Simpson trial, remember that Scott Peterson trial, Tiger Woods scandal, Bill Cosby scandal, Anthony Weiner, former representative out of New York, remember that? All of that stuff happened. That's who she's represented. Aura represented Amber Fry, the girlfriend of Scott Peterson, who was convicted of killing his wife and unborn son. And most notably, she represented more than half. Diddy faces serious federal charges of trafficking and racketeering, which could result in significant prison time if he is convicted. The gravity of these offenses has led some experts, like former prosecutor Niyama Ramani, to suggest that he could face years behind bars. No deal that the U.S. Attorney's Office can offer, and it's certainly not one that Diddy will accept. It would involve decades in federal prison. We're talking about mandatory minimum sentences of 10 years for both the drug charges and the sex trafficking. So we know that Diddy has fought charges before. There were state charges, there were gun-related, uh, the nightclub shooting with J-Lo, but he's gonna dig in his heels, and this case is going to trial. So if you're prosecutors, you really wanna make sure that your evidence is bulletproof. Before you go. Diddy's life has undergone a dramatic transformation, shifting from a world of wealth characterized by private jets, luxurious mansions, and high-end fashion to the grim realities of imprisonment at the Metropolitan Detention Center. Next, 
This stark contrast between his former lavish lifestyle and the harsh conditions of prison underscores the severity of his fall from privilege to deprivation. His desires, including his freak-offs. What a word. What a word that's become, honestly. And just to give you a little list of exactly what him and his employees got up to here, we've got sex trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, coercion, and enticement to engage in prostitution, narcotic offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Wow. <laughs> like, you know what? You're P. Diddy. You've got all the money in the world. You don't need to do any of this. But for some people, the more powerful they get, the more dark their imagination becomes and the more they want to push the boundaries to do the craziest fucked up shit possible. And this is what happens when a psychopath gets this much power. Even those words coercion and enticement to engage in prostitution, it wasn't enough for him to get consenting, you know, prostitutes who do this by trade. What a trade. Do you know what I mean? I don't remember that in my apprenticeship. But you know, people who do this for a living any Anyway, it was fun for him to take people who would never ordinarily have been a prostitute into that so that they could become his toys. And by the sounds of it, P. Diddy and his employees would do whatever it took to get women into his inner circle to participate in whatever fucked up shit he was into. He would use threats. He would use intimidation. He would even use the offer of a romantic relationship, that lover boy method that Ange A monotonous diet of basic prison food, including potatoes and processed meat, further emphasizes the significant shift in his life. This drastic change in his daily nutrition, combined with the isolation of the special housing unit, Shu underscores the impact on his overall lifestyle. These freak-offs purchased multiple hotel rooms for these freak-offs to take place. Had his staff stock the rooms with different items, drugs, lube, extra sheets, things of that nature, for the freak off, didn't allow individuals to not participate in the freak off. And one of the ways that he did that was by, was by using drugs in order to get them to a state of mind so that they would participate, or he would use the tapes as extortion to force them into these freak offs. And he did all of this for his own perverted, twisted benefit. I don't know if he was participating in these. I don't know if he was getting off to these videos that he was making. Who knows? This is crazy. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It's crazy. It's terrible. The amount of people whose lives have been forever affected by this. I just want to know some more information and I want to know who else is involved in this because I have a feeling that this is going to be massive for the next two, three, four years. Reports indicate that Diddy has stopped eating in prison due to fears of being poisoned, raising serious concerns about his physical safety and mental health. This behavior highlights the psychological toll of imprisonment and the heightened sense of vulnerability he faces in his current environment. News tonight, Diddy hungry, Sean Combs apparently refusing jail food. Some say he's missing his private chef and convinced he will be poisoned. Because remember, it's all about him, okay? It's not about his alleged sex trafficking victims. It's about him. He actually thinks someone might poison him behind bars. Good evening, I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for- I know he's in the MDC right now, but he better hide under his bed because Gloria Allred is up his tailpipe now. In the last hours, is there ever a moment that a lawyer who is used to talking for a living realizes I should just shut up? Apparently not in some cases. In the last hours, uh, TMZ, who is creating the downfall of Diddy on Tubi, our friend Harvey Levin, who created TMZ, sits down with Sean Combs's lawyer, I want you to hear what happened. Back when I was a kid in the late 70s, they were called threesomes. If these are genuinely threesomes, how do you explain a thousand bottles of baby oil? I don't know where the number a thousand came. The U.S. attorney said it. I can't imagine it's thousands. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not really sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. They're essentially saying it's a lubricant for an orgy. 
I guess. I, I don't know what you need a thousand. One bottle of baby oil goes a long way. I don't know what you need, need a thousand for. I mean, he has a big house. He buys in bulk. You know, I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. I mean, have you sat in the, in the parking lot of a Costco and see what people walk out of there with? Not a thousand bottles of baby. High profile inmates like Diddy face unique risks in prison as other inmates may attempt to torment them to gain recognition or status. This dynamic can create an environment where famous individuals are targeted, making their time behind bars more dangerous compared to the average prisoner. And we have the latest on Sean Diddy Combs' investigation as the hip-hop star fights racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, and prostitution charges. Well, investigators now working to determine who his co-conspirators were and whether they should be charged as well. TMZ is also reporting Diddy was placed on suicide watch at the detention center that he's being held at in New York. But his lawyer is saying he's not suicidal. This is just routine for high-profile inmates. Just this week, prosecutors say they serve Combs' head of security with a search warrant for his electronic devices. You can rest assured that the feds have already talked to the people who worked for uh, Combs and all of those people have already probably given state. Diddy is currently facing over 100 lawsuits, including serious accusations of physical misconduct and trafficking. This unprecedented number of claims represents one of the most significant legal battles ever seen in the entertainment industry posing a substantial challenge for him. And as if things couldn't get any worse for embattled music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, today a prominent lawyer came forward saying he intends to file more than 100 different lawsuits from alleged victims. Claims we intend to bring will include the following. Violent sexual assault or rape, sexual abuse, facilitated sex with a controlled substance, false imprisonment, compelling prostitution, sexual misconduct, dissemination of video recordings, false imprisonment, sexual abuse. A Texas attorney has recently announced 120 new misconduct allegations against Diddy, planning to file a nationwide civil complaint. The attorney's firm argues that Diddy poses a societal threat, complicating his chances for bail due to the significant amount of presumed evidence presented against him. A, a Texas-based attorney was at a prep conference and revealed that there are 120 new sexual allegations. Now, this is a civil complaint that this firm is going to be filing throughout the country. They found that Sean Combs would still be a harm to society. It's, it's, it's very difficult for a judge to set someone on bail when there's so much presumed evidence and you know you could think in the scenario where a judge would to release Sean Combs on bail and then something else happens. You have to be really careful. I hate to say it but the fact that he was denied bail twice is just working against him even more because people are like oh my god he must really be guilty. I don't know how they're gonna find a jury of his peers. Like, I feel like they'd have to move to, like go to Alaska or something. Like, do you think his attorney's gonna ask for a change of venue? Maybe.